I was thinking about the All in the Family theme song. And I had some really interesting thoughts. And a lot of our audience is too young and they don't remember All in the Family and they don't know that your nickname is Meathead and that you have to live with <laughs> it for the rest of now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the All in the Family things, theme song, boy, the way Glenn Miller played songs that made the hit parade guys wow. like us we had it made those were the days and you know what you were then sorry wow. my gene stapleton's wow. a little wow. shrill unbelievable gene stapleton thank you thank you goyles was goyles and men was men mister we could use a man like hoybert hoover again didn't need no welfare state everybody pulled their weight gr old lasalle ran great those were the days okay that's right. that's the theme wow. song you've now that's heard it that's amazing you. that you thank remember you. all that a huge you can, percentage of the country could sing that along with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I believe so. But and I was just thinking about those lyrics. Uh, yeah. Everybody knew who they were. You know, girls were girls and, and men, men were, were men. men. Yeah. And mm. we didn't need a welfare state because right. everybody pulled their weight. And it occurred to me that really could still be a theme song for a big chunk of the conservative movement of, you know, why do we have all this gender confusion? Why can't we go back to women being women and men being men and everybody accepting their role? Why do we have to have a welfare state? Why can't we go back to everyone taking care of their own kids, everyone minding their own business? And, and it occurred to me that maybe, you know, was Archie Bunker the first television representation of the MAGA movement? Well, of, <laughs> I've heard of, that before. I've heard that before. You? But it, it's it, well, I mean, they say is it was, uh, you know, is Archie Bunker, is he like Donald Trump? I mean, you've heard those kind of things. Yeah. But we, and it's interesting because you say um, we could use a man like Herbert Hoover again. Now, mm -hmm. Herbert Hoover oversaw the <laughs> the Great Depression just collapsed. Yeah, right. I mean, right. we right. And, 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 it gave, history, I think. and it gave birth to the welfare, uh, you know, to uh, Social yeah. Security and Medicare. But he, and all wouldn't, those things. he wouldn't have done that. He just would have let everyone die. Yeah. And so they would learn to take care of themselves like yes. God intended in the Bible. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think it is the first I, I, I mean, I, I should do a deeper dive on it, but I think it is the first culture war show in a sense. I mean, it was before we knew to call it a war. I mean, there was yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is yeah, strong. We were, we, we, were, we were divided. We were able to laugh at it. We were able to laugh at it. Yeah, the yeah. big divide happened in the 60s with the uh, civil yeah. rights movement and the war in Vietnam and the women's movement and the sexual revolution. That big divide started then and then just kept getting bigger and bigger. So here's so it's interesting that you play a key role in the first media representation because you were the younger generation. Right. You were the kids. And, it, you know, and Carol O'Connor was the older generation saying, what the heck is going on here? Right, you right. <laughs> get over here, meathead. Yeah. I'll watch you. Um, so, but what I, but <laughs> he what a Archie, Edith. A thank Edith. you. The whole show. Oh, thank computer. you, Archie. Yeah. Oh, no. Um, I loved her. She, it, was a, it was a wonderful <laughs> character. Yeah. The 60s for a lot of Americans turned the world upside down. It's like everything turned upside down, you know, and, and we saw the, the uh, second wave femi uh, feminism. We saw the civil rights movement and suddenly we couldn't pray in schools anymore. The Bible, you know, like I can't bring, can I bring my Bible to school still? And so there was all this panic of everything we know, you know, we had the Watts riots, we had Detroit mm. in flames. So it looked like the social order was completely breaking down. Right. And for some, some people it was very specifically, you know, it's because of school desegregation and uh, my kids aren't going to go to a school with Negro children, no, you know, so, so for some people, it was really the racial, racial focus. Mm -hmm. uh, my family was upper Midwest. We didn't have that, you know, schools were already integrated. That wasn't an issue, but it still looked like the world was turning upside down. Right. And that, and that led to Falwell and the moral majority, which ultimately led to where we are now. And I, I so I'm just looking at Archie Bunker as a reflection of the generation and the reaction that gave us Christian nationalism of, you know, those were the days is basically MAGA. It's let's make it great yeah. again like it used to be in the 50s. I, I think that's a, that's a pretty accurate uh, 
analysis there. That's a very good analogy. I think that's Thank probably you. true. Yeah, and then the question is, I think, in through the modern lens, is is were they right? You know, yeah, I mean, that's that's right. the question: is were those days better? And and if they were, in what way? You know, when you right. when you dig and, into and it. what I think is interesting is the number of like the angry voices that will come out against the trailer or come out against you know stuff that we're talking about um, that's considered too progressive. So many of them are young men who aren't nearly old enough to have any real connection to those days that Archie Bunker is singing about. Right, you know, right, but and, I think when he says, when he sings those were the days, he means those were the days for white people. Mm -hmm. He didn't mean, because it never was the days mm -hmm. uh, for, for the black uh, population. Uh, it has gotten slightly better as we've moved along. We had uh, Brown versus the Board of Education. We had a uh, Civil Rights uh, Act, the Voting Rights Act. We had a black president. Things have moved, but it's still never been those were the days for right. black people. It right. was for but people like Archie who are white working class people. The, the, the liberal looks at it as, and look at all the progress for women, the progress for minorities, the progress you know, for the LBG, LGBTQ community. The conservative says, and look at the exploding divorce rates, looking, look at we now have almost half of births are outside of marriage. You know, half of kids born today are born into a home with only one parent. And we know statistically that puts them at a huge disadvantage in educational outcomes. So it's so easy for both sides to say, yes, everything has changed and now it's terrible. <laughs> or <laughs> yes, everything has changed and it used to be terrible and now it's better. Um, and that's, that's why the 60s are such a, almost a Rorschach test of do you see that as progress or do you see it as, as societal collapse? And, I, and what I see in Trump more than anything is a strong man saying, if you think it was societal collapse, I'm your guy. And right. I'm actually tough enough to put it right. And it's really hard because conservative Christians and, and as, as the church shrinks, more and more of the church is the Southern Bible Belt. Unfortunately, more and more of Christianity in America is dominated by the states that were Jim Crow states. Yeah. And so it's very hard to get away from some of the racial suspicions. But that's, you know, that's what I think is interesting, even in your own life story, Rob, because you represented the generation that said, we're making progress. You well, know, here's from, the from thing. It, you here's what, through yeah. Obama. Yeah, here's what's interesting. You can say those were the days and was great. Now it's terrible or it was terrible and now it's great. But I, you, you, that the, both of those things are wrong. All mm -hmm. you can do is say, are we making progress? Are we making a more perfect union as we go along? And we know based on how progress is made, sometimes there's big steps backwards in order to move steps forward. There's a great line in the zoo story by Edward Albee. He says, sometimes you have to go a long distance out of your way to come back a short distance correctly. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's what I see happening. With Obama becoming president, we've taken a huge step backwards because I think it was threatening. It was very threatening to a lot of people to think, oh, a black man can be president? No, that's not right. So you see a lot of what uh, Trump has been able to galvanize uh, is part of the, that grievance. But it's we're on an edge right now. So the mm -hmm. question is, will we move forward at some point again or will we collapse? We know what happened during the Civil War. We collapsed for a while, but then we did move forward eventually. So that's the thing. It can't be, it was yeah. terrible, now it's great. It was great, now it's terrible. It has I to think, be, are we moving forward? I think the challenge is, and I'm speaking on behalf of, of you know, the conservative wing of Christianity, uh, and even to a certain extent, you know, the more progressive wing of Christianity, who's deciding what progress is? And how do we, do we still, right. because we used to have enough of a common language 
that we could describe progress and agree right. on our, our description. Right. Um, right. And that was when, you know, turn of the 19th, turn of the 20th century, Christians were the social activists that were that were fighting against child labor, that were fighting for unions. Christians right. were pro-unions until the right. Russian Revolution, and suddenly unions became part of, of communism, not part of Christianity. So a lot has happened in the last 150 years that has pushed us into two different sides where we can't even agree on what progress is yeah, anymore. Yeah, that's, 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 that's sad because we have yeah. to agree on certain things. We have to agree that women having uh, more rights and equal rights and equal pay, we have to believe that that's okay. If we don't, you know, then we go backwards to when a woman couldn't vote. Or we have to believe that a black man should get an equal opportunity under the mm -hmm. law and or then slavery was okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We have to mm -hmm. agree on what, what progress the, is. I if agree the with goal, that. If the goal is to build a society where more of us are flourishing, you know, there's more human flourishing. If that's the mm -hmm. standard, you know, I think there's a lens, you know, that you can look at all this through. I mean, you guys sort of talked about the racial component, but that it's broader than that. There's probably a lens that looks at this that says, well, you know, there are there are some people who feel that their prospects have dimmed, that they that the world mm -hmm. is not uh, as favorable to them anymore as it used to be. And those people are overwhelmingly the people who would like to go back to, you know, to the days of yore. But there are a lot, a lot of people who feel like their prospects have improved. And, you know, ultimately, I would like to think that all of us can agree that working towards a more level playing field that lifts more people up is the goal. Ah!